fault is it when an accident occurs? Over the last few weeks, we've seen floods and the winds, and there's been a lot of damage to property around the area. At our church out at Cornell, we had five trees that have fallen over, roots and everything. Whose fault is it that the trees have fallen over? It's a good question. I looked at the SES, whether they'd come and help us, and they said, oh, it didn't damage a building. It's not hurting anybody. They can just stay there. I then rang the insurance company, and they told me, it's an act of God. And so we'll pay it as long as you pay the excess. Which doesn't get us very far, because the excess is $1,000 or something. And, but, but it was an act of God. At least that's the way the insurance company talks about it. Who's responsible, though? Accidents happen. Sometimes we can pinpoint whose fault it is. But sometimes an accident happens, and it's, it's no one's fault. And so we say... It's an act of God. Today's gospel is a fascinating account of two public events that occurred at the time of the public ministry of Jesus. This was, these were events that, we, that were talked about at the time of Jesus. These were a current affair events. For the Jewish people in the Old Testament, and even for some Jewish people at the time of Jesus, they had this idea that if something bad happened to you, if a tree fell down and it landed on your house, well, they had this understanding that there was something wrong with your relationship with God. There was something wrong with you. You were perhaps a sinner and God was punishing you. And hence we get this, this expression, an act of God, that supposedly we have a God of vengeance who wants to impose these disasters upon people. That's not our understanding of God today. But that was the understanding in the Old Testament. And that was some of the understanding even of the Christians in the New Testament as well. Something wrong happens to a person, well, and they must have been doing something wrong. They must be sinners. There was a Jewish historian at the time of Jesus who was in and around Jerusalem. His name was Josephus. And he wrote and reported about how Pontius Pilate had killed many Galilean Jews in the temple in Jerusalem. And these Jewish people had come from Galilee up to Jerusalem and they were offering a sacrifice in the temple, as the Jewish people would do at Passover and at other times. But immediately before they had offered this sacrifice, they had been involved in a protest against Pontius Pilate in the presence of the Roman Empire. And so Pontius Pilate came in and he illegally took Jewish temple money from the temple treasury that had been brought by these Galilean people. It created a riot. Some people were seriously injured. This is reported by Josephus and St. Luke is the only of the gospel writers who tells us this story at the beginning of our gospel today. Even though it was Pilate who commanded this atrocity to be carried out, that people were killed and that money that had been offered in the temple was taken, the natural assumption for some of the Jewish people was that some of those people must have been guilty and they deserved what happened to them. Which is a terrible way to think. But that was the debate that was going on at the time of Jesus. Who was responsible? Was it Pontius Pilate? Or was it these people for not having a good relationship with God? Pontius Pilate took some of the money that he had from the Jewish from the temple in Jerusalem to help build an aqueduct. Those who know something of of ancient Roman um, public in, in industry and public infrastructure, aqueducts were a way of bringing water from the mountains into the cities. Important piece of infrastructure. You need running water. And Pontius Pilate justified taking the money from the temple because he claimed these visitors were coming in from elsewhere using all the water and we needed water in, the, in the, the town of Jerusalem so we'll pinch some money from the temple to help build the aqueduct. Which then gets to the second story. There was another public infrastructure accident that happened. And that happened, and we're told about it, we're told, are those 18 people on the tower at Siloam who fell and killed 
Are they guilty? This is what was said in the, in the gospel. So what happened? Pontius Pilate took the, took the money from the temple, then started to build an aqueduct with the money he'd taken from the temple, which had caused the deaths of some of the people from Galilee. In the process of building this tower for the aqueduct, 18 people died. And again, a number of Jewish people were, were, were recruited or were given jobs to help in this construction project. And the Jewish people again said, well, maybe they were sinners because they were working with Pontius Pilate to build the infrastructure. All of this is quite interesting, I think, from a historical perspective. But I think it comes back to how do we understand God? What does God expect of us? God expects of us to be people, as we're told in this gospel a number of times, we're called to repent of our sins and to live the way of God. But let's not necessarily assume that when an accident happens upon us, that this is God punishing us, that God's wanting to get at us. That's not the way we understand God. And that's not what Jesus is saying in the gospel. He's not saying God is a God of vengeance. He's saying we need to repent. We're at the moment, we're during the season of Lent and we're called all of us to repent. We have a number of candidates who are in our church this evening who are preparing for first reconciliation where they will own up and say, yes, they've failed, but they want to be better. They want to live the way of Jesus with love. And that's the story for all of us. If you haven't been to reconciliation for a while, I encourage you to come. You can actually come before Mass. We have reconciliations from 4.15 through to about quarter to five, sometimes 10 to five before the Mass at five o'clock today. Just in the back little space there of the, the chapel space, there's a little confessional space there. Haven't been to confession for a while, good thing to do. A lot of Catholics often go to confession before Easter. So this is a good time to start thinking about it. And our gospel today is getting us to think about the accidents that happen in our lives, but also the mistakes that we make. Accidents are accidents. Sins are not accidents. Sins is where we hurt somebody, where we do something intentionally against God or against our neighbour. So let us pray for repentance. Let's pray for those who've experienced accidents that they will receive assistance and support. But let us all pray that we will be a people who will repent of our failings. If you haven't said the act of contrition on a daily basis for a while, you might like to pray it with me now. It's a good prayer to pray. It's a great prayer for our candidates and they're learning it at the moment and it's said part of their first reconciliation. It's a great prayer for us all to say. Oh my God, I am very sorry that I have sinned against you because you are so good and with your help I will not sin again. Amen.